person enthralls you as a keeper of mysteries, first impressions last a lifetime. John Peel Bishop sat at a large round table at the Peacock Inn near Princeton University. It was September 1913 for the entering freshman, and Bishop was from his dreamy, small, but tradition-proud home of Charlestown in the Blue Ridge. It was the first time I'd gone out alone in those opening days. We stuck very close to the boys who had come down from school with us. It was by chance that I sat next to this youth, so quick to conversation. We stayed on when the others had gone, and in the leafy street outside, the September twilight faded. The lights came on against the paper walls where tiny peacocks strolled and trailed their tails among the gayer foliations. Bishop's new sudden friend was Francis Scott Fitzgerald from St. Paul, Minnesota, who hadn't fully discovered his love of writing just as yet. And Bishop remembered later, Fitzgerald was pert and fresh and blonde and looked, as someone said, like a John Quill. He wrote later also, The places in the Peacock Inn were cleared, and other students sat down at the tables around us, we talked of books, those I had read, which were not many, <laughs> and those Fitzgerald had read, which were even less. Those he said he had read were, however, many, many more. The status-conscious Fitzgerald, who had unsuccessfully tried out for Princeton's freshman football team, was worrying what his St. Paul friends at an adjoining table would think of seeing him fraternizing with this artsy type bird and as Scott wrote later mistake me for a bird too but Bishop's spell was cast Princeton's Dean Christian Gauss wrote later John Peel Bishop looked the poet he was there was an air of distinction about all that he did and even as a freshman, he had a self-possession and self-mastery which gave him the poise and bearing of a young English lord. Gauss went on. Now, Scott Fitzgerald's unruly Irish temperament, his irresistible love of glamour, made these aristocratic qualities something he would forever envy, but never acquire. And truth be told, young Scott envied the charming southern gentleman's way with women of the smart set. Bishop's persona was so unresolved for Fitzgerald that he explored and tried to define him in his work This Side of Paradise as the aristocratic D'Anvilliers. Above all, Bishop's influence on Fitzgerald and his writing was there too. As Gauss wrote on this as well, Bishop came with a more carefully thought out and more accomplished mastery of the technique of English verse than any other undergraduate writing for the literary magazine at that time. In fact, Scott Fitzgerald, amidst his fame in later years, wrote his daughter Scotty as she was about to study at Vassar College. It isn't something easy to get started on by yourself with writing, you know. You need, at the beginning, some enthusiast who also knows his way around. John Peel Bishop performed that office for me at Princeton. I had always dabbled in verse, but he made me see, in the course of a couple of months, the difference between poetry and non-poetry. Bishop also taught Fitzgerald a disdain for some of the English professors at Princeton. So, Fitzgerald would recall of these days, my own happiness in the past often approached such an ecstasy that I could not share it even with the persons dearest to me, but had to walk it away in quiet streets and lanes. And he would add, 
I got in the last two years at Princeton my passionate love for poetry and historical perspective and ideas in general that carried me full swing into my career. Thank you.